All right, folks, we're going to start the uh, Montclair City Council meeting. Welcome aboard. And as we normally do, we'll begin the invocation, the Pledge of Allegiance. I just want to, and as we do in the uh, invocation, let's think about our neighbors in the Samuel Mountains. Obviously, they're going through some difficulties right now due to the snow levels. So with that, please stand in the invocations. I'm sorry, and uh, would you like to, Andrea, announce who is doing the invocation, the pledge? Invocation will be given by Pastor Donald Recker of the Christian Development Center, and the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Please stand. Good evening. Well, Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity that we have called out to seek your face. I'd like to remind you of your word where you declare if we would acknowledge you in all of our ways, you would direct our path. And that's really what we are depending on, that you would give the wisdom and insight to this council so that they can make the proper decision to help the citizens that you have put into their care, Lord God, with the inflation, rising cost of gas, the rent, you know, going out of just skyrocketing, and then to help them with our homeless population. And then, Father, we want to thank you for the businesses that are needed in Montclair, we pray in Jesus' name that you would help them, Lord God, to attract those businesses to the city of Montclair, to continue to make it great. And then, your, Lord, use us as a model in the Inland Empire of what's possible when we have a group of leaders that will submit to your will, your way, and your word. And then, Father, of course, remember those who've been affected by the storm, by the rain and the snow. We want to thank you now for sending the aid and the assistance that they need. And for those that lost loved ones, God, we ask that you would comfort their hearts. And Father, we'll be so ever careful to give you all the glory and all the praise. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. amen. Please join me in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, can I get uh, roll call, please? Council Member Lopez? I'm here. Council Member Martinez? Here. Council Member Rue? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson? I'm here. And Mayor Dutre? Thank you, and I just want to welcome our colleague, uh, Council Member Lopez, back. I know he... Um, been having some uh, recovery going on, and you're looking good, Ben. Thank you. So now we will have public comment, and this is an opportunity for members of the public to uh, speak to the council on, on any item that's not on the agenda, or if you have a consent calendar item, just announce so uh, which item you wish to speak on. And um, if you're in the audience, obviously you'll fill out the speaker's card, and you'll give that to our staff here. If you're on Zoom, you'll just hit the... Uh, the raise hand feature on Zoom to request to speak. If you're on phone, you hit star nine. So I'm gonna ask the city clerk if we have any speakers today. Yes, I did first receive an advanced request from Ruby Long of Kurt Hagman's office, fourth district supervisor. Ruby Long, yes. I assume she's gonna talk about something about Saturday, but I'll let her talk. Go ahead, Ruby. That's right, good evening. It's all yes, yours. I, I did wanna just um, come on and remind everybody that this Saturday, March 11th, we're having the shredding event, and it's going to be right there at the Montclair City Hall. It's from 9 a.m. to 12. And uh, we did want to just say that it is a rain or shine event. There, we might have a little bit of rain that day, but you don't have to get out of your cars. So you just can drive up, and we'll take care of the rest. It's uh, three boxes uh, maximum per car. And, yeah, we'd like to see you there, and it's a free event. And like I said, ra ra um, rain or shine, you know, we'll be there to take care of it. You don't have to get out of your car. Okay, Ruby. And if uh, if you put it on Facebook post or we have a flyer, can you connect me? And I can also post it on Facebook and let the Montclair community know about it. Sure. And I've sent it to um, Andrea and uh, a couple. But, yes, I will send you one as well. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very no much. No problem. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. All right. Okay, our next speaker is Nina Joyner from Christian Development Center. Nina, how are you doing today? Fine. Just fine. Welcome. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Nina, and I'm from Christian Development Center. And I would like to just say a thank you to all of our council members who was a part of our Black History, our first annual Black History Affair last month on February 11. Thank you all for coming out. We appreciate it greatly. We definitely look forward to you coming out again next year. Um, we have a little token of appreciation. I'd also like to say thank you to our chief for being present and having his officers present there. It made all the difference in the world. Things went on behind the scene that you know the crowd was not aware of and he took care of it. And we're so grateful and thankful for that. So I'd just like to read this card for you guys and then I have a little token for you. And it just says, thanks. <laughs> It's the thoughtfulness of people like you that makes the world so bright. And you can take it and see if there's some notes and stuff inside for you. May I come and? Yeah, just give it to uh, Mike here and he'll pass it out to the council. That's very kind of you and the Christian Development Center. Thank you, Nina. I'm assuming you know the people on the, on the right side there, the two. Yeah, you know him well. Okay, a little bit. <laughs> Serena, thank you for always being there with the food drive too. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. I, uh, Nina, I, I apologize that I missed the event, but I've been re recovering from surgery the past month and a half. Otherwise, I would have made an appearance. So glad it was a success. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. I have a question, Mr. Mayor. You have a question? I have just one question. Um, these cookies that were just delivered to us, were these um, handmade by Erica Rucker? Okay, anybody who doesn't want theirs, I'll take them. <laughs> I thought they were. Okay, well, we don't have coffee, so we can't have cookies right now with our cookies. Oh, okay, you can have cookies with your coffee then. All right. Next one, go ahead. Our next speaker is Bill Kaufman. Here's Bill. Strange squad, just getting too damn old. <laughs> Brown University, huh? Right. Yeah, my granddaughters are Brown, and they're almost probably breaks the bank to send them there, I'll tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> but I'm not going to bore you because I've been up here and I've said the same thing a number of times. But one thing I'm, I did pass out a uh, new economic study from Montclair to um, Mikey Puentes, and I ho was hoping that you folks could have received it and, and, and examined it prior to me being here. I was actually at your budgeting meeting, but I thought the meeting was going to be at 7, so when I showed up here, it was empty. But what I did this weekend is I, in Rancho Cucamonga, I had um, a group of seven people doing a round table. There's two business owners and four ladies uh, that are just residents and a sheriff from San Bernardino County. And I just, <clears throat> I asked him straight forward, what are your concerns about putting retail cannabis stores in your city right on Main Street? And the one overwhelming thing that, that they said and, that, and I, is that they did not want to show the youth that they promoted and accepted the use of cannabis. And I understand that. But in talking in depth and letting them understand what these retail stores are going to be like, how they're going to be guarded and no one gets in who's under 21, and there's going to be well-trained, mostly college grads, working in these stores. And then, of course, Rancho. Rancho's looking at about $7 million in revenue. Montclair is looking at right around $3 million, depending on whether you can get uh, exposure on the freeway. If you can get exposure on the 10 freeway, that jumps up significantly. Um, and again, what, I'm, I, what I'd like to do, and I'm not sure who can get this, this done, I'd love to have a committee that can look at this in depth and understand that you're, you're sort of missing the boat when you got places like Pomona. And these places are coming up you're going to have your residents are going to be going to the stores, and it's hard to get people back to your, your, uh, your city. So that's one of the things that I think 
now is the time to move and to put in the very best for your city. You don't want to, and one other thing is, if you looked at state law, it is so comprehensive. I mean, it addresses every single issue. The city doesn't have to worry about zoning, doesn't have to worry about much of anything. And what I'm proposing and I'm going to probably move forward with is to apply for a business license, um, having a location that would take a dispensary, a, a visible location, and put a 132-page document behind it that shows every compliance that's necessary to run these dispensaries. What people have to understand, it's a commodity, it's legal, it's totally controlled, and the cities need to wake up, I believe, and say, hey, my city can use three or four million dollars. We can control this. We can set them, there are no sensitive areas, away from schools, away from wherever, but surely not down on Holt Avenue in an industrial area. Nobody wants their, their, their wife or, or anyone going down there seven o'clock at night. Um, and that's one of the bad things that has happened. Corona's just now realizing it. They're starting to rezone and letting these places move out of the industrial area. We just gotta look at this as being, it's a new industry, it's very large, and it's coming, it's not gonna go away. So why not go ahead and make the move, do what you need to do for the city and for your residents, and approve cannabis dispensaries um, that are perfectly legal and comply more than any other business in the city. I would just hope that some, I'm not sure who I'm gonna to talk to, I do talk to Mikey Puentes a lot, but I would like to have some kind of committee to look at this in detail and say, hey, you know, I think we need to move on it. Thank you. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, feel free if you, if you want to get seated. Uh, but I do now, I do know that uh, this council last year, last summer, actually, uh, we had a great discussion on this issue and we placed two measures in the ballot in November. I'm aware. One measure, uh, you're aware of both. Yeah. One measure is uh, should we, uh, uh, c city council, consider uh, 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 legalization, legalization of commercial cannabis sales in Montclair. The other one is to uh, tax it, and both measures adopt it. So this council uh, will have a lot of work on this issue. I know staff is, they have, staff's got a lot going on, but this is, this is on their front, run, front, front burner as well. And sometime we will be dealing with cannabis and just having a, have a, a further conversation about it. The, the entire council. It won't be a committee. It will be this, all five members of this council. So just want to let you know. Okay, Mary. And, and, I, and I appreciate that. I just, I think that not only this council, any council is remiss if they don't get on board and get significant revenue. Right. I mean, Thank you. you. Guys, you're looking at three, four million dollars. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was all the cards. Okay. So now we go down to our consent calendar items. And uh, anybody on my left want to pull a consent calendar item? Diane, any? No? Anybody on my right? Ed? No? Ben, you have something? Mr. Mayor, um, I will pull <clears throat> A like Apple 1 and 2 for purposes of abstaining, and then just item B, like boy, two, for an inquiry. B2. Uh, okay. okay, so uh, do you have a question about B2? I know you're gonna abstain on A1 and A2, go ahead. First question, uh, during my absence, was, the, was this issue discussed at any meeting? This uh, item A, B2? Yeah, we had a workshop on it in January, on item B2. Okay, I, if I'm correct, because I don't recall this, I missed that. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that said, there's a lot that I uh, have uh, forgotten since January 17th, my surgery. Um, was the issue of high speed going southbound Monta Vista addressed or brought up? Well, I don't recall that it was focusing on specifics like that. It was, was more about a general 
uh, presentation regarding the systemic safety analysis report as well as the uh, local roadway safety plan. The migration, of course, is from the systemic analysis report to the local safety plan. This will uh, ask, this is asking for the council to approve a grant so that we can proceed with the study, uh, the local uh, roadway safety plan study. Um, so basically this document will serve as the addendum, if you will, to the grant application? Well, the document will be a result of the grant application. Okay, all right, I, I appreciate that clarification. What, what stood out to me was page three in the box entitled The Importance of Addressing Speed in a Safe System. And it was, I found it profound that in the little box at 20 miles per hour, basically for the public that wants to know, it shows a car and it gives a rate of speed, 20, 30, 40 miles per hour. And it tells you what would happen in the event of an individual being hit at those different rates of speed. As to be expected, the higher rate of speed, the greater the injury and casualty. Well, the reason why I'm bringing that up is I think it's pertinent that we adopt this document and look into these issues. Um, there were two incidents just within the past, since the last council meeting, one on February 26th, southbound Monta Vista. Monta Vista in Harvard, a car plowed through a corner home, through a brick fence and wrought iron. And then just recently, Monta Vista in Kingsley, southeast corner, a family there had a car nearly come through their property. Thankfully, it did not. And issues like this, I think, need to be addressed and looked into. And I've always been a big advocate that we lower the speed on Monta Vista because of the incidents that we've had there. But um, luckily for you guys, it hurts when I talk, so I'm going to wrap up my comments on this and just say that this is good, but I wish we can, again, look at the speed and take into account recent incidents that have happened. Thank you. Well, so to be clear, the, re the analysis did look at these things. It, it does specify certain streets that are part of the LSRP um, that were addressed at the presentation. We didn't discuss specific speed issues related to accidents, um, although what you're discussing are streets that were relative to the primary focus of the report. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and Ed, just to confirm, the LSRP is a fairly mandated report, required report to obtain uh, certain federal funds, am I correct, Ed? Yes, the Strategic Highway Safety Plan uh, requirement from right. the federal government. So the three recommendations that the staff report talks about, Monta Vista, uh, what's it? Yeah, Monta Vista Avenue, and Ramona from Kingsley the State, and then Central from Orchard to Holt, uh, if I'm correct, uh, we can apply for grant funds based on those recommendations. And obviously, we'll, we'll be working on Monta Vista Avenue, and, um, and then, of course, Ramona Avenue, too. We, we agree that that area uh, where Montero School is uh, requires attention, and, and also the apartments. Well, so to be clear, you're adopting the LSRP tonight. Right. $40,000 right. had been expended to complete the plan. Right, exactly. So, and I, I do want to say, too, uh, uh, I was at a SCAG meeting last Thursday. It was a joint meeting of different SAC SCAG committees, including the Transportation Committee, which I serve on. And part of the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation that was done was comprehensive regarding a, uh, a, uh, comp a plan that we're supposed to adopt uh, by the federal government. But nevertheless, uh, the, the one of the slide present, uh, slides there showed the amount of uh, deaths, um, due to uh, traffic, uh, traffic violations has gone up the last three years. It's unfortunate since the pandemic. So it is a, it is a regional wide issue we're facing here in the uh, Skag area, which is LA County, Orange County, Riverside County, San Diego County, Ventura County, and also Imperial County. So um, it's, fortunately it's grown. And um, so I'll leave it there. Good evening, if I may okay. add. Um, <clears throat> Yes, this the local road safety plan is required 
in order for us to apply for future highway safety improvement program grant funding. So that's why this plan needs to be adopted. And um, it does discuss several of the corridors where a lot of the accidents are happening and some yeah. recommendations of you know, things to do to, to help with that. So this will aid us in getting more safety um, type of grants to address those issues. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I get a motion? I will make a motion for the consent calendar as presented. I'll second. Moved by Bill and second by Carissa. And then uh, we'll do our electronic vote. Point of in uh, inquiry. I need to abstain oh, on, yes. on and A1 part, and A2. Yeah, and then the motion will reflect to the uh, Council Member Lopez abstaining on items A1 and A2. Yeah. You're comfortable with that, Mr. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll take the vote. The vote's adopted with the uh, exception of A1, 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 A2 with the abstentions for Council Member Lopez. All right. Now we're down to communication. And I'll start with uh, Marsha. Great, thank you, Mayor. Council members, there's a few upcoming events that I just wanted to announce. In case you missed it today, was our first day back at Montclair Place for the Montclair Walkers program. But it's okay because this program will be held every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. We meet on the upper level near the canyon. The motto of the group is Montclair Walkers for health and fun, so come join us. For a program application, you can contact Recreation Coordinator for the Senior Program, Deandra Gutierrez at 909-625-9456 or dgutierrez at cityofmontclair.org. The City of Montclair Parks and Recreation Master Plan, as I mentioned at our last meeting, is in the final stages of plan development. We want to invite everyone to join us on Tuesday, March 14th, between 6 to 7 p.m. at the Montclair Senior Center. You can learn more about the project recommendations and our next steps. Light refreshments will be provided. And I also wanted to mention that our monthly food distribution is scheduled to be held on Thursday, March 16th in the Montclair Community Center. We have a new time for that giveaway. It's going to be from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. First come, first served or while supplies last. To qualify, you just need to bring a valid ID and be a resident of San Bernardino County. The commodities change month to month, but may include canned meat, canned vegetables, fruits, and other food staples and frozen items. And finally, I wanted you to mark your calendars for our upcoming Easter extravaganza. This community event is scheduled for Saturday, April the 8th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. in Alma Hoffman Park and the Montclair Community Center. Please bring your own bag or basket to collect your candy-filled eggs while supplies last at a variety of Easter-themed games. Prize eggs and an opportunity drawing for a large Easter basket for children ages 12 and under will also be offered. In addition, there will be photos with the Easter Bunny for $3 per photo or a dollar using your own camera. And let's not forget the Ontario Montclair Kiwanis Club will be sponsoring a pancake breakfast for $5, which includes two pancakes, two sausages, and one juice while supplies last. Additional sponsors for this fun event include the City of Montclair, Women's Club of Montclair, the Montclair Police Officers Association, and the Montclair Firefighters Association. So we hope to see you there. Great, Next. thank you, Marsha. City Attorney, any communication? Nothing from me this evening. City Manager. No items, although I do want to point out that Marcia did not speak about the Renaissance Art Show that they had last week, which was extraordinary. Uh, if you had the opportunity to attend it, the children who submitted their artwork, uh, it was just phenomenal. They also had art classes, sculpturing, uh, painting, and uh, cartoon uh, drawing as well. Well attended, but it was probably one of the best after school programs I've attended. It was extraordinary. Great. And I will agree, too, with the city manager. I also attended the, the art program for the after school. And, um, yeah, it was a lot, uh, much bigger than one compared to the one we had three years ago prior to the pandemic. So good job on staff. And uh, tell them to go back and tell them the council says you guys are doing a great job over there in the after school program. I sure will. We have staff meeting tomorrow. So Perfect. I'll be sure to announce Perfect. it. Perfect. 
Uh, I just want to recognize some of the significant days here or uh, during the month of March, and I want to start with Women's History Month, and I just want to recognize all of our uh, female council members, female staff members, members of the public, female. I uh, just want to say, and of course, all of our uh, ladies here in the city of Montclair, and just want to say uh, Women's History Month. Thank you for all your hard work you guys do, and you guys are uh, great leaders as well. Uh, also, I want to recognize uh, uh, the Irish community, Irish American Heritage Month, which my wife is Irish, so I want to recognize our Montclair residents. And of course, at the end of the month, we'll be recognizing or uh, it'll be uh, Cesar Chavez Day, which is March 31st. Um, last Saturday, I know all of us were there, but I'll just make it real quick. Uh, I, went, I did, did attend the Little League opening um, at, at the uh, Saratoga Park. And I just want to give kudos to our st uh, staff, uh, especially our public work staff, making sure the fields uh, look good, look a lot better than uh, I understand they were two or three, two or three days much uh, earlier. So good job, staff, and that was a great event. Um, two, weekends, uh, two weeks ago, Council Member of uh, Mayor Pro Tem Johnson and myself uh, were at Monaco High School where we uh, spoke to the uh, the class of uh, 2023, the seniors, and also, uh, I guess, much earlier in the year, they had uh, a job interview uh, uh, program, which Mayor Pro Tem uh, John through the chamber uh, ran, and they'll be recognized for that program as well. So I just want to say that I was there. Uh, not this weekend, but the the prior weekend, um, when it was raining here, it was snowing here. I happened to be on a water trip along with uh, Ann, and we were with the uh, Metropolitan Water District, uh, sponsored by the I, I, uh, Inland Empire Utilities Agency. We got on a bus with some other elected officials and water experts, and so we left here uh, Friday at uh, 7 a.m. as the weather was starting to come here, the rains, the hard rains, and, and we were uh, in Blythe, and it was blue skies and sun, I learned a lot in Blythe, and then went down to Yuma and the All-American Canal, went through the Imperial Valley, saw all that, Coachella Valley. Uh, I barely saw any rain or clouds. Uh, saw a lot of water and saw a lot of agriculture. I didn't realize how much agriculture they, they grew in Blythe. Uh, I also, in, of course, in Yuma as well. I knew about Imperial Valley. So it was a very much of an educational experience. We also stopped at Salton Sea, which is, which is also part of this whole Colorado, lower Colorado uh, ecosystem here. So uh, very, uh, it was a very good trip. Um, do want to recognize uh, uh, that week and I was gone, but uh, the, hard, the hard rain we got and obviously Montclair Public Works, um, you know, going out there and making sure streets look good. And of course, the fire department and the police department out there also um, making sure our public is, is safe. Um, and then uh, I know we had a fire Last week, a two alarm fire last week, last Thursday. Just want to recognize the fire department, of course, the police department too, and then of course all the Navy Marine uh, fire agencies that came in uh, to deal with that fire. Um, and then uh, I want to announce this coming Saturday, uh, Mockler High School, it's an annual event. I don't think they've done, they, they, went, they, they did one last year, usually held on, uh, on, on Martin Luther King's birthday, but this year it's gonna be held, uh, this coming Saturday, it's called the Miles for Montclair. And it's a fundraiser event that the high school does, the students do, and they walk through Montclair. They'll spend two hours starting at 10. And, um, and so I will be there. I try to do some advertisement on Facebook about it. So anybody's interested, council members know all about it. I know council member Rue is, will be out of town for that day. Or uh, I'm not out of town. He's at other events he's gotta go to that day. Uh, but I uh, just wanna announce that event there and the public's invited to come. And again, it's a, it's a walk and it's all, obviously a donation. Uh, to uh, support uh, Mokla High School, uh, Mokla High School students who have economic distress going through their lives and their families. Finally, um, the Veterans Wall, uh, we'll do the Veterans Wall mem uh, at on Memorial Day as we usually do. We usually honor uh, Mokla residents who serve in the uh, armed services or no longer with us. And so I, I have nominated, uh, I picked uh, our former mayor, Harold Hayes, who was a, a veteran of the United States Coast Guard and so uh, he'll be recognized on Memorial Day. And with that, I'm gonna start with, uh, how about Council Member uh, Martinez? I'd like to put her on the spot. Thank you, I have nothing to add tonight. <laughs> Good attorney. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I have a few quick things. Um, I have a question for staff. Um, last July, uh, we talked about um, adding flashing signs throughout the city, flashing stop signs, and I was just interested to know where we are in that project. Are we still? Are they still coming? Are they? Do we have them designated for the spaces, et cetera? Bid for um, about 180 signs, and uh, we're evaluating the bids and eva uh, evaluating the locations as well. Since we did um, apply for a grant to add uh, some of those uh, stop flashing signs in some corridors as well near schools, so we're just strategizing right now. But we should be bringing it, bringing, bringing it back to City Council for a word. Uh, by April 3rd, I think, is our council Excellent. meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted to touch briefly on this fabulous new sign on the front of the building for, you know, okay, whichever way it is, you know, I'm geographically challenged. Um, <laughs> but I have on some occasions as I'm traveling uh, south on Fremont, I just pull over and stare at the sign because there's so much information there and it is so well done. So kudos to the team who worked on it. Um, kudos to the IT team who did a great job. It's fabulous. I love it. And then I have uh, Mayor uh, Dutre, I have a question for you and probably um, Councilman Rue Edward knows the answer to this too. I've never been to the Montclair High School walk. I wanted to go this Saturday, but I have a conflict. So my question for you is, what is the donation process if you just want to donate to their cause? Uh, there's an email. Um, if you see the flyer, there's an email address in there, or if you just contact me, I'll get you the email address. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Who, on that day, who do I mail it to? Is there a web of your address I can do it online? It to me, I can take it with me too, and I'll take a check with me on site. Okay. All right, thank you. And then I have a couple other, um, a couple of chamber events that I need to talk about. Tomorrow, the Monta Vista Water District, um, the site on San Bernardino Avenue is having a ribbon cutting at 10 a.m. because they, and I'm sure that, well, you all need to come and I'm sure they'll explain to us. They've changed the process that filters the water. I don't quite understand it. I know um, Director Lopez understands it, but um, here's what, how I do understand. We're gonna have cleaner drinking water. So please do come tomorrow at 10 o'clock on the uh, to the site on Mon on San Bernardino Avenue, and then on Thursday we have a networking breakfast at O Park at 8:30, and there will be um, the self care lab will be there talking about wellness, and so I hope that you can all come. If you need more information, please contact the Montclair Chamber of Commerce at 909-985-5104, uh, or you can come and see us directly at 8880 Benson Avenue, Suite 110 here in Montclair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, that all, that's all I have. Thank you, uh, Council Member Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in your recognition of um, Irish heritage, um, you forgot to mention March 17th being St. Patrick's Day for those that are Irish. Um, as the mayor stated, I uh, made an appearance at the Little League opening ceremonies and to see what would have been my team um, get introduced and paraded to the, to the crowd. Uh, given my surgery, I'm taking a hiatus from coaching. Um, but it was a fun time had by all, and I hope the individual teams that sold uh, items for food and whatnot made a good profit to benefit the boys and girls on their teams throughout the season. Um, I, before I forget, I also wanted to ask about <clears throat> the marquee sign on the building. What is the process or who makes the determination on uh, veterans' names to be featured and recycled? I noticed uh, three of the same names have been up there for a while. What is the process? Are we going to highlight certain veterans or all the ones that have a banner? What is, who's making that decision? 
Well, those names that are appearing on the on the marquee board right now are the individuals who were recognized last month as part of the ceremony for the banners that were awarded to them, and we would be doing that each year. But uh, staff will be bringing a policy to the city council for approval, uh, for consideration and uh, adoption uh, related to how the uh, sign will be used going forward. But right now, the use of the sign is an internal decision by staff. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, also, um, Mr. City Manager, I think in October of 22, um, my colleague, Councilman Rue, brought up and I um, piggybacked on the idea of having a workshop, if you will, to discuss um, introducing a veterans housing unit or structure of some kind in the city. At the time, we were told that would be brought up at the beginning of the new year. We're now the third month into the year. What, when can we expect to have that uh, issue brought to us? Uh, that discussion was in conjunction with the discussion on affordable housing generally, as well as uh, homeless issues. Uh, the council asked that workshops be presented on that, and staff is working on them. There will be uh, probably a consolidated workshop, but we continue to collect the information necessary to present to the council, and we'll make you aware of when that date will be scheduled. I appreciate that. Colleagues, I would like to request that we join, um, there's about two cities in the, uh, within Riverside County, and one here, our neighbor to the south, Chino, adopted a formal position in support and solidarity with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department in expressing its outrage over the senseless death and shooting of Deputy Isaiah Cordero. City of Chino adopted a letter that they then sent to our respective state uh, legislators, as well as the presiding judge of the San Bernardino Superior Court, asking that Superior Court Judge Kara Hudson uh, resign from her position because of her decision to um, parole the shooter. I'd like to entertain if we could adopt such a thing so we can in turn stand in solidarity with the city of Chino and go on record with the other cities that are beginning to express their opinion about removing Judge Kara Hudson. Could that be done, Mr. Mayor? Well, I think, I think, uh I haven't seen the letters. So I don't know what that letter was. What's what the re, what is the resolution? But I'll be. I'm going to ask staff to, to uh, contact the city of Ontario, the city of Upland, city of Ranch Kamunga, um, city of Chino Hills, and see if uh, they have any similar resolution. And if they plan on doing that, then yeah, we we can also look at it here in the city of Montclair. But I'm, I'd like to see what the other cities are doing first, and also the county of San Bernardino if they plan on doing something to the board of supervisors as well. So. We'll have staff look into that and get back to us. I appreciate that. Thank you. And then uh, just on a personal note, of course, obviously, I'm, I'm back tonight. I know I missed, I thought I missed four meetings. Apparently, I missed like five or six. Um, my apologies for missing the meeting. Um, the night of, or morning of January 17th, I had surgery. And much um, more extensive surgery than perhaps I anticipated. And... Um, I'm here tonight because I didn't want to continue being out of the loop much longer with respect to city business and being absent from the dais and not casting votes. Um, for those members of the public that have reached out, sent text messages, emails, phone calls, cards that were aware, thank you so much for your genuine concern and your care. Um, Bill, thank you as well for those inquiries and those offers for, for help. Xavier, you, you reached out as well. That if I needed anything, I haven't taken you up on the offer, but I appreciate the kindness. Um, the surgery was a painful process, and uh, I got maybe a couple more months, hopefully, the doctor says, of recovery. But it's a very painful process when they have to slit your throat to go in and fix your neck and spine. So um, here I am. 
I've already lost a lot of weight as it is, but I've lost another 30 pounds. And um, the anesthesia and the procedure affected my memory a little bit. I don't remember Christmas. I don't remember New Year's Eve. There's some things my memory has lapsed. Learning some things. Uh, I had to learn how to shave around the incision and motor skills. I wasn't a cane and a walker, things like that. It was just a pretty intense process, but I'm here. Um, perhaps to the chagrin of some of my critics, I'm here. I survived. Um, that was supposed to be a joke, a self-deprecating joke, trying to make light of the situation. You, don't, you never give up politics, of right? Of the pain. I probably won't, John. I probably <laughs> won't, whether I'm on the dais or not. But thank you so much. Um, and I will slowly get back to normal and slowly be here at the dais again more often. But thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for indulging, Mr. Mayor. No problem, Councilman Lopez. Again, uh, uh, you looking good. Uh, like last time I saw you, uh, I didn't recognize you. And one reason I didn't recognize you because you look a lot skinnier than. I lost 30 to 40 pounds in the hospital, not, look... not being able to eat for six days. Yeah. So welcome back and uh, take one step at a time. Don't rush and uh, don't get stressed. All right. And, and stay, away from, stay away from Fox News and CNN News, okay? <laughs> All right, Council Member uh, uh, Brew. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will talk about uh, an event I attended, as did Council Member Martinez and Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. It was Hope Through Housing. They had the opening of their Veterans Village in Pomona. It is a beautiful apartment complex designed for veterans who have been homeless. Now that they're in the units, they're no longer homeless. They have a full range of services. They have everything on site that these individuals need. It provides them with dignity, and that's something our veterans desperately need. I really do wish we could do something here in the city. It may not have to be as extravagant as this. We can do a small, tiny home village. We can use the model that's been used in Baldwin Park. You've heard me talking about it for well over a year now. They're very cost effective. They're very efficient. They get the job done. The ones in Baldwin Park are aimed, one set for single people, others for families. We can focus ours on veterans. There's plenty of places that we can put them here, and many of our faith-based community would do that. I don't think it takes a tremendous amount of effort to do this, and quite frankly, anybody out there who doesn't want to house a homeless veteran, shame on you. I will also say, again, Women's History Month commemorates the day that women were, had the right to vote. They earned it. Many of them gave their lives to be able to vote. And we continue to this day to honor and recognize that. Let's also not forget that it was 1974 when the Fair Credit Act was passed that ensured women were allowed to have credit in their own name using their own sources of income. In many states prior to that, a woman had to use her husband's income and have him as a co-signator. California had passed that many, many years before. And of course, when you look at the movie industry, nobody was going to tell someone like Katherine Hepburn or Lucille Ball what they could and could not do as far as credit. Uh, we were always ahead on that, but it commemorates that day. And I want to recognize the chair of our Community Activities Commission, Diane Wells, who will be recognized on the 11th by our S Senator, Susan Rubio, as one of her women of distinction. I have already uh, said to Diane, I wanted to be there, but I'm committed to the event with uh, the swearing in for Assembly Member Freddie Rodriguez that day, which is why I won't be at Miles for Montclair, and I won't be at Chafee College event, but there's a lot going on that day, but I do think it's important to know that one of Montclair's own is being recognized, and that's important. Montclair Little League, you already heard about that. It was a great opening event. Families were happy, students were happy, the players were happy. And this is a positive with our young people. I will again take a moment to thank Congress Member Torres for her diligent efforts in securing funding to redo the fields at Saratoga. I think it's important that we recognize those who are actually active in doing something in our community. Crestline, we already heard about this. It, I think it, it's a travesty that in the largest county in the United States, we cannot 
find a way to airlift food and medical supplies into Crestline. There are people up there who are dying. And the county tells everybody to be prepared. Yes, be prepared. But the county admitted they weren't prepared, so they need to be prepared as well. I, I, I just don't know why it's taken so long to do this. Uh, I, I hear all the excuses. I just see that you can get aircraft, helicopters, to drop food and medicine there. Uh, SCAG will be, Southern California Associated Governments will be on May 4th. I will be unable to attend due to the fact that I am in Sacramento flying home that day and then a few hours later on a plane to Washington, D.C. for my work world. Uh, the drought, despite what everybody may think, is still there. The only reservoir in the state of California that is at or above its historic capacity is Lake Kaichuma. Everything else is below their historic averages. We still have underground reservoirs that have to be filled in an underground water table. So we need to continue to do our conservation efforts. The rain has blessed us with the ability to water our lawns and our trees, but let's con uh, continue to cut back. Um, Miles from Montclaro will be unable to attend due to the fact that we'll be at Assemblymember Rodriguez's event. And this is, will only be the third Miles from Montclair I have ever missed. The other two I missed because I was in Washington, D.C. for the inaugural. And then finally tonight, I, I, I want to comment on something that is going on that affects everybody. Recently, there have been a lot of accusations against a member of Congress, Congress Member Judy Chu. She represents Claremont to the west and Upland to the north. She's been a longtime supporter of the gold line and truly working to try to get that through whatever she can do at the federal level. Accusations were leveled that because she is of Asian descent, she is not a real American and that she's a subversive. I take personal umbrage on that. I have known the Congress member for well over 20 years. She's a, not just a member of Congress, she's a personal friend of mine. I've been in her home with her, with her, her husband, Dr. Mike Ng, a well-known attorney. I have broken bread with them, and I can tell you they're real Americans. Congress member Chu was born in Los Angeles, grew up on 62nd and Normandy in LA, went to UCLA, and also received a doctorate in psychology. Her father was a Chinese American, served in the Second World War with distinction as a flyer. Her mother was born in the Guangzhou province and met Judson Chu, they were married and had several children. Judy Chu has been a long, long supporter of this country. You don't have to like her politics. We, we have an opportunity in this country to disagree, but we need to disagree without calling people subversives and not real Americans. The smacks of McCarthyism from the 1950s when people were accused of being a communist. Some were, but in many cases, they accused people of being communist on hearsay evidence, evidence that they believe because, well, my friend is so-and-so, and they said they saw this person there. We had many people who were accused of being communists, including Lucille Ball, Humphrey Bogart, and Lauren Bacall. They were not communists. The people who do this fail to recognize the tenet that is part of our society, our legal standing, that everybody is innocent until proven guilty. We have a society where you have to hear both sides. And in this case, we've had members of Congress who simply chose to jump on an issue. Maybe they don't like her politics or her legislation. They have that right. But please don't call somebody an unreal American, a subversive, simply because they're not the same nationality and ancestry as you are. Again, I, I, I will, can assure everybody here, Congress Member Chu is a very, very loyal American she loves this country, and all you need to do is go to any of her events, and you'll see. She began her career in Monterey Park. I believe many of the Asian residents of Monterey Park are far more real Americans and far more patriotic than many of us in this room. I've seen and broken bread with many of the families over in there through some friendships I have, and they love this country. They fly the flag. They can't wait for the 4th of July. So I'm saying this tonight. When you hear this, please know it isn't true. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I know Judy, uh, Congressman Chu is a strong supporter, and she's a great 
Congress member and a great woman, so, you know, half that stuff, most of that stuff is a bunch of crap anyways. That's, that's the unfortunate part of our society, especially with social media these days. But I'm gonna leave that there, and what I'm gonna do is just adjourn this meeting. So everybody, have a nice evening.